Welcome back to Divinity Said. I posted a video last week about Kiwi Farms gearing up to sue Epic for the false claim that they hosted CP that was immediately parroted by a bunch of internet retards and there's an update to that. He started a some fundraising and let's see how how it went. Let's talk. Let's just start with the obvious uh, thing that people are going to expect me to talk about. The Kiwi Farms legal fund thing, which I announced last Friday, um, has hit its goal. And when I say it has hit its goal, I mean it has actually surpassed, far surpassed its goal. Uh, it is at a, I, my original goal, you can't see the original goal on the page, but it was originally $75,000. I took out my abacus and I tallied up the 1,600 people who voted that they would support such a fund. And I divided that by uh, $75,000, which is what it takes to take a small claim to like a jury trial. And I approximated that if those people had donated $50 a piece, um, we would be able to hit that goal. Well... The average donation which we received is uh, about. It was at, when it first started. It was at like five hundred dollars, and then it went down to about two fifty. And this is, by the way, does not include any of the crypto donations. I think that in total we've received, received about five thousand plus five thousand seven thousand dollars in crypto. And I have absolutely no idea what to expect in terms of the uh, mail. So I'll have uh, my first update on how much was received this Saturday in terms of money orders and checks. Obviously, this is a lot more than I expected, which gives me a lot of leeway in how I pursue things. And among those things is Epic and Alejandro Caraballo, who had made the false claim, completely false. Like literally in the 11 years, the 11 years now, This just so uh, as of the third... The Kiwi Farms is now 11 years old under my administration. And in the 11 years, we have literally, and remember, I am involved in the day-to-day -day moderation, and I have been involved the entire fucking time. Not once have we ever had child pornography posted to the site. Never. Um, I, would, I would obviously fucking recognize this. You can't say that we host child pornography, because we fucking don't. But we never have. Interestingly, Epic decided to delete their tweets. And Alejandro Caraballo decided to delete their tweets saying that we host child pornography. Isn't that strange? I wonder, um, between Friday and today, what happened? What information Alejandro Caraballo and Epic had received to change their perspectives on the Kiwi Farms? They must have received some kind of compelling piece of, of information that informed their perspectives of the Kiwi Farms really baffling they know that it's false they know that it's not true and in particular even ethan ralph had published something about the kiwi farms hosting child pornography after oh because i lost my human processors and he gloated and said what about the child porn and then he deleted that tweet so ralph also deleted that they should because they shouldn't have posted it to begin with because they know it's they know it's bullshit One hundred fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money and it can definitely afford a lawsuit maybe even two lawsuits uh unless you're suing a big company unless you're keeping the scope down um we talked to a firm it was a big name firm like would have absolutely have the capacity uh to scare the fuck out of anyone if we hired and they were the biggest firm that was willing to even entertain the idea of representing the kiwi farms in this the problem is, is that they want like a thousand dollars an hour to handle this case which means that taking it all the way up to trial would be like half a million dollars that's not tenable <laughs> so even with even with one hundred fifty thousand dollars, right there is a uh, a risk of biting off more than you can chew and this remains a like a david and goliath situation where we have to be very lean uh and very responsible and the representation that that we go for has to be ideologically aligned because we can hire really good lawyers, but unless they're like actually, uh, and what they were asking for, by the way, they wanted $10,000 on retainer and then 40, they expected to charge, they wanted to bill us for um, a uh, consultation, which they estimated would cost $40,000 in total. And then at the end of that, they would give us a decision if they could represent us or not. <laughs> so they, they want, that's how, that's how expensive corporate law is. They wanted $40,000 for a decision before even moving into the, the, the trial into like the litigation phase of things. 
I think that California will be the jurisdiction. However, there is a, a variety of jurisdiction available to me. But I'm, I mean, honestly, it would be great if we had somebody who was like in this field wanting, wanting to, for an ideological reason, to set a precedent that deliberate meddling and anti-business, anti-competition practices apply to deplatforming so that shit like this cannot continue. And I feel like, I mean, it's so obvious. You have to, you still, you still have to be grounded in reality because what ha like you look at the, um, Ty Beard shit and you look at what happened to Vic Mignogna, uh, you cannot fuck around. It's a, it's a serious proposition. Like this is when you go to courts like this and you're dropping $150,000 to fuck with some co company, you have to make sure that you're, you're handling it with like the respect that it requires, because if you don't, you're really, really going to fuck yourself up and you're going to regret doing it. Ty Beard was, was ordered to pay $376,000 for a for what it's called a fee shifting statute um when or an anti-slap law but an anti-slap is a type of a fee shifting statute uh, hardin looked into it and he said that after this case the state of texas actually amended their anti-slap law to be less hard and require less proof to get passed apparently specifically because of the uh vic Mignogna case but yeah his life got completely fucked up because of this bullshit and Ty Beard is now in hiding. I think he moved to, I think I saw him at the bar. When I was out over there at the bar in Belgrade, and I was hanging out with uh, Tupac and Hitler and Epstein, I think I, there was a new guy there, and I swear he looked so much like Ty Beard. Hey, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. If I go to Bing and I type in Kiwi Farms, the fucking URL is right there. The website is the first result, and it's the actual URL. It's the correct URL. Can you believe that? A fucking search engine that just shows you the correct answer to your fucking query. Wow, what a what a shocker that is. I wonder what happens if I type if I just go to the copilot, the AI. This is one I did. I've typed in create image of an obese woman. It said, All right, I'm gonna do that for you. I'm like, mm. All right. Two fat women's got it. Could you make me an obese woman of color? It's like, yeah, here you go. And I'm like, um, what? Create an image of obese man in suit with a tie. I want to see what color they make him. So, so far they do fat, fat white people. Do you know what obese is? I said. It's like, yeah, fat around the middle. And it told me the math and all that. I'm like, all right, now create me the image of an obese woman of color. I already created that for you. Do you want me to create another one? If so, maybe you could just tell me why you even want this. And this is the best it could do. Oh my God.